Stop what you're doing. I've got two of the new exclusive design collection Harry Potter ones, and I'm gonna be showing you all the details. Hello to you Greggles and welcome back to my YouTube channel with me, the Greg Who Lived. I am extremely excited to be able to show you two of the new ones from the new wand collection by Warner Brothers. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my hot take on the whole collection, which ones I like, which ones I don't like. And I'll be giving you more details of how you can get your hands on some of these wands and the two that are in these boxes. Don't forget to subscribe for more Harry Potter content every weekend. And if you love this video, give it a big thumbs up and comment below. Wednesday, I was just minding my own business, working from home when suddenly my Instagram was piled high with notifications all about the new Harry Potter wand collection. Originally in New York, they were gonna be opening a big Harry Potter store around this time. Warner Brothers released that there was gonna be a brand new shop and with it come a lot of new celebration ones. And some of those were gonna be for the four Hogwarts houses and a few extras, which we've only learned about on Wednesday. The collection is a total of 14 ones. However, from today, there is actually a new wand which has appeared on the New York site. So I'll discuss that later on in the video. But for now, in the UK, we can get 14 of these new designed ones by Warner Brothers, The Wizarding World, and they each come with their own look and their own unique design. You can kind of group them up into three separate categories. So we've got the Hogwarts mascot ones, which is for Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin and Gryffindor. We've got the artifact ones, which encompass the locket, the Hufflepuff cup, Ravenclaw's diadem and the sword of Gryffindor. And then I'm going to call them the miscellaneous group which is made up of a fantastic Hogwarts inspired wand and some familiar creatures from the Wizarding World. The wands can be purchased from the Warner Brothers website. The new ones are costing £33 plus delivery, which in comparison to a normal wand, which costs £32, isn't that much more expensive. And I'm guessing that these are gonna be maybe a limited run, who knows. Fortunately, at this moment in time, you can't actually use your gold membership on the Warner Brothers tour website. However, if you are in America, you can now go on to the harrypotterstore.com and that website allows you to enter your gold membership code and you will be getting the money off. So they work out at $40, but with the money off, they work out at $36. So not a huge price difference between normal ones and these celebration ones, but there are a few differences in terms of packaging and the wands themselves. This is a style of wand which has become quite popular at the tour. Very simple, just a simple box with the bit of protective over the top and the wands are presented just like this. However, when we look at the new ones, we can see they're in a very snazzy box. A lot of the ones are similar length. This one is slightly bit longer here but it's interesting to see that they've really developed this new exclusive range and kept their character ones quite separate now like with all harry potter merch i presume that the warner brothers team have really tried to appeal to a mass audience they want a lot of people to buy these ones to be inspired to want to have them so i think they've tried to cover off a lot of different areas before i show you the two ones that i bought i thought it'd be fun to go through the list give you my hot take and I can show you that exclusive new one, which at this time cannot be bought in the UK. I think I'll begin with what I think are probably the worst ones out of all of them. And I think that has to go to the house mascot ones. Each of the house mascot ones comes in the colours of their house. So yellow for Hufflepuff, for Gryffindor, blue for Ravenclaw and green for Slytherin. However, when I originally read that they were going to be doing these ones as mascots, I didn't know they were going to be quite literally the mascot kind of stuck on the end of a wand. I think sometimes the design teams at Warner Brothers might think a bit too literally rather than thinking outside the box. I guess it's fine to have a mascot themed wand however I'm not entirely sure some of them are that good looking and especially the Hufflepuff one which is a very odd colour, a very odd texture and looks like something your cat might do. Raven which is going to annoy some people because it's not an eagle by now we know that Warner Brothers like sticking to the Raven, but 
That one is sculpted I think quite well and I quite like the colour but it will put a lot of people's backs up that they haven't gone for the eagle and they have gone for this sort of raven look. I have seen a lot of people posting that wand on Instagram and they really love the raven so I think that one's going to be a mixed bag. As for the snake I think it looks a bit like a crayon, it's very green, very very bright and again it's too literal having the snake going all the way around the core. I think they could have really done something a bit different or maybe applied a snake texture to the wand. However, I do think the Gryffindor one is really cool. I like the lion on the end. It looks very well sculpted and I really like the colour. It looks the most natural out of all of them. So I think that's probably out of the mascot collection, the most successful one. But then move on to the second group, which is the Hogwarts Artifacts range. And there's one for each of the houses. And I think this range is possibly some of the best ones from the collection. But starting with the Hufflepuff one, which takes on the form of the Hufflepuff cup. It's got nice gold contrast, it's very bright, but has that sort of antique look. I think the textures of this wand look brilliant. And you can see how they've translated the cup onto the wand without it being so literal. Going along the same theme, I think the Ravenclaw one does this as well perfectly. I absolutely love how they've sort of incorporated the diadem and the eagle into the top. It's not so literal. Three simple gems in it, and it looks really elegant. I really like the silver that they've used, and I think it looks fantastic. The Gryffindor one I think is really interesting in terms of the textures and the patterns they've used and I love it when they use that patina gold effect. It's very similar to the effect they use on the band of Nicholas Flamel's wand and I think they've done a brilliant job at translating once again the Gryffindor sword into a wand keeping it very Gryffindor inspired but not literally turning a sword into a wand shape. So I really congratulate them on that one as well. The last one is Slytherin and I'm a bit unsure as to why it has this orange handle. I understand they're trying to take inspiration from the locket, which I suppose is that yellowy orange. However, I think the orange kind of misses the mark. I'd be interested to see what this one is like up close as obviously I can only see the images that are online. Hopefully when I do get around to going to the tour again, I can take some close ups of all the ones for you. So with that one, it could be that the lighting when they took the photos makes it look very bright and very orange and it could be a lot darker. Really like that they've inscribed all the little symbols and details actually into the gem handle. I do like that it does have the little snake which kind of bonds the wood effect and the gem together. And lastly, we come on to this weird miscellaneous range which has a lot of creature inspired ones and some other interesting variations as well. I think definitely the weakest one out of this collection is the Dark Arts Totem Pole one. I think this might be a personal thing, however, I think it's a bit odd really to just put some Death Eater masks together as a handle. I don't really know where they were going with it. It does look like a totem pole. It's really odd, it's quite strange. I don't think they really put a lot of thought into that one. And I think it kind of does let the collection down. I understand they really want to have a dark hearts themed wand but i think there's definitely better ways they could have gone around it and the second miscellaneous kind of wand is this hogwarts design which i can confirm is one of the ones that will be in this video as well it intrigued me that they came up with this design i think this is a brilliant job by the design team it's incorporating a lot of the architecture from hogwarts that we know it's got aspects from all Hogwarts houses on it. Natural looking wooden wand with the brilliant architecture that Stuart Craig designed Hogwarts with and I think they have brilliantly translated that into a single wand. And from those ones we go over to the creature ones. Now I think a lot of people will find this a very unpopular opinion but I think a lot of them look really bad and in particular, I think the Ukrainian Iron Belly wand, which is a dragon with a stick attached to it, is really not fantastic. The paint job in the picture of it looks quite bland. The sculpture isn't that particularly good, the mold that they've used. And I think they could have just done a lot better with the idea. It's not really in a huge part of the films apart from Deathly Hallows. But I'm thinking that people that go to the tour, especially when you see that huge dragon in the foyer it might influence you to want to buy the wand that kind of goes with that in the gift shop so that's my thinking behind that one but i was really shocked to see that there was no wands relating to buckbeak or mandrakes or something that's more loved from within the series different types of owls because we know that 
that's what they take to Hogwarts, or a Hedwig themed one, so maybe this is a collection that they could expand on, who knows. They have included a bow truckle wand, and we know that bow truckles have really done well from the Fantastic Beasts franchise, people absolutely love them, and it's actually really interesting that the bow truckle that they've used, and the model that they've used, is actually how I more imagined bow truckles to be. For those of you that played the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets video game, they had bow truckles in, and there were these kind of little wood creatures, and they were brown and very barky, and this is what the wand looks like, as we can see. And I do really love the textures that they've used on this. It looks very different to the bow truckles that we see in Fantastic Beasts. It looks a lot different to Piggit, who I'm then presuming is a baby bow truckle rather than adult, like the wand is meant to represent. I couldn't help laughing a little bit because the expression and the face of it looks a bit like a, a little old man, but I do think it's quite a cute wand and as I say the textures are brilliant and the colour and the paint job on that wand does look fantastic. So potentially that might be one that I would get in the future. One that I definitely will not be getting is the Phoenix or Forks I suppose wand which I think leaves a lot to be desired once again. I think this looks like a really messy wand and actually it's one that I have seen similar to the Geek Gear ones who are another company that have produced these kind of Harry Potter themed ones for a couple of years and I have noticed that the Phoenix one has conveniently disappeared on Geek Gear and has suddenly appeared in this new Warner Brothers range so I do wonder if they've been forced to take theirs down. I know that for a lot of people the Phoenix is quite a lovely aesthetic, they really love the phoenix as a creature and so for them I think you will absolutely love it. However for me I just think it lacks a lot of detail, like the Ukrainian iron belly, and I think they could have just picked some more exciting creatures. Now by no means do I want them to make a Grindylow wand, but it would have been nice to see some creatures that aren't seen as much in Harry Potter be explored, but as I say I really hope they do a bigger range next time and they start including even more creatures. Thestrals are of course the creatures that Harry and Luna share a bit of a friendship over because they can both see them and I thought that this sculpture was really hauntingly beautiful just like them. Ghost like skeletal form I suppose and I think they've done a really good job at incorporating that into a wand. I really love the paint job. Thestral is the core of the elder wand so really interesting that they have kind of reversed it and made the Thestral, the actual look of the wand as well. The last one, which as I film this now, is not available in the UK, but might be by the time I post this video, is the Golden Snitch wand. And it is only available at the minute on the US site. The design itself is quite interesting. By now, you must know I absolutely love Golden Snitches and collecting anything Golden Snitch. However, I think that this design isn't amazing it doesn't really push the boundaries of the golden snitch and it does just look like the snitch has been stuck on to a rod it's painted gold it's very shiny but i just think it once again they could have really created a nice sculptural looking wand it just kind of looks like it's been stuck on as an afterthought because of the shape they've had to elongate the wings and it looks a bit of a strange form but potentially it could look like it's kind of flying as you're using it. This is coming from me, who absolutely loves anything that has a golden snitch on it, a pair of socks, a hat, I'd get it. So I'm really sort of up in arms whether to get it or not to add to my collection. As it stands, if it is just something you can get from America, I don't really feel like forking out all that money and having to pay import duty as well. So we'll see if we get it here in the UK, and if we do, I will probably get it, but if not, I'll have to just be happy looking at photos online. Quick recap, the house mascot ones suck. Artifact ones, yes. The miscellaneous ones, Hogwarts one is absolutely brilliant. Some of the creatures are a bit hit and miss. Why don't we take a look at two of the ones which I got. Let's begin with wand number one, which is this very long box. They have completely redesigned the boxes. They're trying to offer something really new and what I love is these two are from the same sort of collection, so they're quite consistent in their appearance and the graphics that are used. I do believe that if you get one of the house-related ones, so for Ravenclaw, the boxes will be blue, for Gryffindor red, Hufflepuff they'll be yellow, and Slytherin they'll be green. That gives you a clue as to the type that I have gone for. And I absolutely love this jolt of purple that runs all the way around. 
At first I was unsure whether they'd made the boxes the right size, but it's meant to be like that. You know, we can see on the front we've got the Wizarding World logo, we've got Harry Potter, an exclusive design collection. One thing I do find very interesting is that everything has Wizarding World on it now, rather than JK Rowling's Wizarding World. Whether that's because they've kind of taken that off of her after everything that's been happening, or because she has just sold most of her rights to Warner Brothers at this point. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm definitely not complaining. We've got a nice matte finished black box, gold foil front, and as we lift the lid, we, we can see that we have a little card on the inside just here, and the wand is actually wrapped in these layers of purple paper. When we look at the Ollivander's ones, they tend to have the bits of fabric which you pull across. I think it's quite sleek, very modern look in comparison to the Ollivander's ones, and I really love it. But before we look at the wand, you have to read the little card that comes with them. This is a brilliant little design feature, I think, and it's wonderful if you want to display this alongside the wand. Just gives you a bit more backstory to the wand. And this one actually says Hogwarts architecture inspired by the intricate designs and hallowed halls of the prestigious magical school, the Hogwarts architecture wand celebrates the school's unique aesthetic and the architectural detail. Designed with the historic legacy of the school in mind, this wand is for those who dream of walking the walls of Hogwarts. What a wonderful description. If that doesn't make you warm and fuzzy inside, then you're watching the wrong video because I absolutely love that. And what a lovely little thing to just display with the wand. On the back, we've just got the Hogwarts Crest logo and all the usual trademarks and things at the bottom. But this is it. As we peel back the paper, and just let you know, this is quite thick paper. It's almost like tracing paper, but purple. It's quite translucent, but very interesting. Ready? Here is the Hogwarts architecture wand. And I actually think this wand looks better than it does in the promo pictures. Just to show you the insert, this is very similar to the example that I showed you earlier, just the plastic with the sort of velvet touch flocked inside. So that's not too much different, but it will keep your wands very safe if you want to keep them in the box. Here is the wand, and it is magnificent. I absolutely love this wand. I love whoever's designed it, they've done a brilliant job. And just all the features that have gone into this. My friend Hannah actually laughed at this design because it does look very church inspired or cathedral inspired with all the architecture, which we know is the medieval kind of gothic look that Stuart Craig was inspired by and all the little details are just brilliant. It takes on the look of a Hogwarts turret. We've got the four logos for each of the houses on the side. We've then got what looks like the room of requirement pattern door, followed by Dumbledore's Griffin door, and that's repeated once again. And then round the base, we've got these columns, which look like the columns that kind of line the whole of Hogwarts. And it goes down into more of this architectural look, straight down into these veins that end at the one tip. Everything about this is just brilliant. First off, it's very comfortable. You could do a lot of magic with this, but it's just a beautiful silhouette of a wand. The paint job is brilliant. It's going for that more natural look rather than sort of add the metallic looking embellishments that a lot of the Hogwarts artifact ones do. This is just very raw, very original very stripped back and I think it does the architecture justice. A really elegant design. I think it does encapsulate the whole of Hogwarts in a wand. I'm really surprised thinking about it now that they've never done something like this but I think they've really put a lot of effort into this one and I think you can tell just by how excited I am about it but also how passionate I think they have been about the design of this wand of Hogwarts and representing it really well. This wand would definitely be one that I would 
display. A lot of the character ones I've kind of had and you know they might be okay to put on display but nothing that's kind of attention grabbing as this because I think this is a beautiful object whereas some of the ones you know they do look typically like ones. It actually inspired a new cosplay which I'm going to be working on hopefully when I get through the mountain of other ideas that I have. However this goes perfectly with the architect sculpture which I also have from the Warner Brothers tour and as we can see they are very similar and cohesive. This dude is the architect and he's the one that with the help of Rowena Ravenclaw actually came up with the design of Hogwarts. When I think you take a look at this, alongside the new wand, they match up very well and they're going to look absolutely brilliant on my shelf together. The history of Hogwarts and how Hogwarts was created has always been something that's really intrigued me and I hope we find out a lot more about it, but I think this just gives us one more step closer to showing our pride Hogwarts School for Witchcraft and Wizardry and it's going to be an absolutely beautiful piece in my Harry Potter collection. And so moving on to my second wand, which I've kept as a bit of a surprise. But which wand is it? Whereas the first wand was particularly long, this one is slightly shorter. Have a look. Like with the Hogwarts architecture wand, it comes with a little card and it's going to give it away. But this is the second wand which I went for. Inspired by the black skeletal winged horses that bring pause to many a superstitious witch or wizard, the Thestral wand's design features their haunting likeness wrapped around wood, symbolising the Forbidden Forest. Although these creatures are associated with death and misfortune, this design is for those who can see the beauty inside all things. Again, what a lovely little note. Same as before, we've just got the logo on the back, but even the little festival picture is quite cute and this would be perfect to display. Now that the cat is out of the bag or the festival is out of the woods, let's take a look at the festival wand. So because I think these are in the same collection, comes with the same purple paper, but we can reveal a Thestral wand inside. And here is the Thestral wand. And what drew me to this wand was the fact that I love Thestrals anyway. I think they're such an underappreciated creature within the Harry Potter world. But I just thought the sculpt on this was beautiful and how they've done it wrapping around the wand is really interesting. When you look at something like this, I think it puts a lot of the other ones to shame. The fact that this one is, has its wings wrapped around the body, they've textured all of the wand to make it look like wood so it does have that link to the forbidden forest the colors i'm not sure if it will pick up from this far but up close it's brown but with this kind of wash of grays and greens makes it look almost a bit mossy on the wood and i just think it's a really interesting silhouette and very different to the others in the collection i realize i sound a bit like a hypocrite because again this is i guess an animal stuck onto the end of a wand. However, Thestrals, we don't normally get a lot of merch relating to them. Whereas the Forks is just kind of stuck on the end. I like how the Thestral looks quite uncomfortable and you get the whole skeletal bone structure throughout the wand as well. Some people might say that the paint job is a bit bland. You know, this isn't as punchy as some of the Hogwarts artifact ones. It is very monotone, but I think the paint job can kind of be outweighed by the incredible sculpt that has gone into this and I just think either from afar or up close it is a beautifully designed wand. Saying all of this, once I received this wand, which was today, and it took two days to arrive, crazy fast hours, 
I have noticed that there are a few white spots across the design where the paint has been scratched. I've also noticed a few little marks that you get in mold making or casting where the air bubbles haven't quite risen. So I have actually sent an email to the Warner Brothers team who are very inundated with emails at the minute and they say they take about 48 hours to respond. So at the time of filming this, they haven't responded. So I'm not sure what's happening in terms of getting a new product, if they can part refund, I'm not really sure. But I was kind of unhappy because I was so excited about this one that it did have these kind of paint bits missing, dodgy bits in the sculpt, especially when you're paying that sort of slightly more premium price for a limited product. One thing I will say is seeing these two ones in person does make me want to go and see the rest. So even though in this video I might be saying I don't like most of them or a lot of them or a few of them, when I see them in person it might be a completely different story. Next time I go to the tour I would definitely get footage so you can see all of them, but for now it is just these two that I have added to my collection. The Thestral wand side by side with the Hogwarts wand definitely shows you there is a bit of difference in the length, but it's not about the length of the wand, it's about how you use it. And I think the length of this one just goes to add to the elegance of the overall wand. Whereas this one, because it has this nice silhouette, it doesn't need to be too long and spindly. But both of them, pretty reasonable sizes and both incredibly magical. And so with that, Greggles, I come to the end of what has been a really enjoyable video to make. I really hope you've enjoyed looking at these two new ones from the exclusive new collection by Warner Brothers. I have absolutely loved showing you the new details giving you my hot take on the whole collection and I would love to know which ones are your favourite, which ones are not your favourite and which ones are you most excited to add to your collection. Comment below and let me know. Until then all that's left to say is of course subscribe at the bottom for more Harry Potter videos every weekend and you can enjoy some of my other videos either up here or just there. Until next time Stay safe, stay magical, and never let those muggles get you down. All the best from me. Bye.